Hi there, Chase from High Level here, and in this video, we are going to learn how to build one workflow automation that's going to take care of four things. When somebody books an appointment, it's going to send their confirmation email, send appointment reminders leading up to the appointment, send a follow-up survey so your client can easily communicate back to us, High Level, what happened with that appointment, and then lastly, if the appointment went well, it's going to send a review request. So let's get started. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is set up our review request. So let's go down to settings, and then we're gonna click reputation management, and here's where we can configure the review request. So uh, if you need help with this, go to help.gohelva.com and search the help doc, but basically you just put in their Google Places link, it'll generate the link, and then down here you can set up your messaging. So we're gonna say something like uh, your feedback means a ton to us. Please take a quick second to leave us a Google review. Whatever you wanted to say, if you wanted to add an image, you can do all of that, but set that up here and that's gonna be step number one. Step number two, we need to create a new custom field. So we're gonna go custom fields, add a custom field, select the monetary option, and then give this a name like purchase amount. So I've already created one here. I called it survey dash purchase amount so I could find it easily, but call it something like purchase amount and then hit save. All right, step number three, we're gonna go create a form. So let's go back and we're going to go to sites, forms, builder. And here we're gonna create a form and we're gonna call it something like showed and purchased. So I already have one, I called it showed and paid. Let's check this out really quickly. All I did was first options, give it a name. On submit, I changed this to message and I just typed something like, thanks, we've marked this lead as one and updated the purchase amount because that's what's going to happen with this automation. Um, so set that and then drag your fields in. So I just did full name, email, and then I went to custom fields and searched for that purchase amount field that we just created, and I dragged that in as well. Um, lastly, go back to standard, go down to button, drag in your button. I like to make them full width so they look pretty cool, and then set your button text there. Click out, and then hit save. Okay, next we need to create three pages. So let's set up a quick funnel. So at the top here, we're, gonna, we're in sites already, so we're gonna go funnels, and I set one up called survey pages already. You could name it the same, but basically create three steps, one for no show, one for showed but didn't buy, and one for showed and paid. Now these are the three options that I'm using for this example. If you wanna have more options for your client to choose from, you just add whatever pages that you want here. So let me click into a page real quick so we can see what I have. All right, so the first one I have here is for a no-show. So it just says, thanks for letting us know that they didn't show up. We've added them to the no-show automation and we'll nurture them into rescheduling. Again, you can put whatever you want here, but this is the option if your client chooses that they didn't show up. All right, next I have showed but didn't buy. So again, just a heading and a subheading that says, thanks for letting us know that they showed but didn't buy. We've added them to the long-term nurture automation to bring them back in the future. Again, whatever you're gonna do, just put it here so that your client knows after they get redirected. And then the last page I have is showed and paid, the goal, right? So when that happens, we're gonna have something like, awesome job, let us know how much they paid below so that we can update the reporting. And then here, you're going to add the form that we just created. So click the orange plus, click form, and then choose from the dropdown. Looks like I have a little CSS issue going on here. Choose that form that we just created in the last step, and then you'll see it here on the page. Hit save, obviously, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, once you have your pages set up, we're gonna go back and we need to make sure that we set a domain on here. So if you need help setting up domains, go to help.gohighlevel.com, just search domains. Basically, you just need to make sure that in settings, you have a domain set up here, so that when you go back to steps, each step has the URL. So we need to copy these URLs and save them for the next step. So once you have your URL saved, we're going to go create some trigger links. So we can get to those if we go to email marketing, trigger links, click on links, and here's where we're going to create them. So for example, click add a link, 
give it a name. And so the first one that I set up was called No Show and then paste the URL to the No Show page that we just created. Do the same thing for showed but didn't buy. And then for the last one for showed and paid, you're going to put some parameters on the end of it. So paste the link to the page and then what we want to do is put a question mark to indicate that we're creating some uh, URL parameters here. And this is what you want to add. Full underscore name equals bracket bracket contact dot name. Ampersand email equals bracket bracket contact dot email and bracket bracket. Um, so this will be in the tutorial below. You can just copy and paste that. But what this is going to do is it's going to pre-populate the fields in that form that we just created so that your client doesn't have to retype anything. All they have to do is punch in the amount uh, that was paid to them and hit uh, the submit button. All right, so once you have your three trigger links created, we are ready to move on to our workflow. All right, so let's head over to the automation tab and then we're gonna click the create workflow button at the top. And when we do that, we're gonna have some recipe options. And we want to choose the recipe that's called appointment confirmation plus reminder plus survey plus review request. So go ahead and select that and then hit the create new workflow button. And let's first hop over to the settings. And we're gonna turn on allow multiple so that we can test this over and over and probably leave it on because um, your client might have the same customer book over and over again. So let's turn that on and hit save. And then let's head back over to actions. All right, so now we're, let's review our trigger. So it's set as appointment and we have appointment status is confirmed. So this is gonna run anytime an appointment is confirmed in your system, but you might wanna filter this down to a specific calendar. So we could add a filter and choose like in calendar or in a calendar team and then select the specific calendar that we're talking about. So let's say it was the free teeth whitening offer that we're doing and they booked into that calendar. So we're gonna specify that here and then hit save. All right, next up, we're going to check out the confirmation email. So this, you're gonna fill in your settings here, you know, from name of your client, the email that you want it to go out from, et cetera. And there's some text in here that you can go ahead and modify it if you'd like. But this is essentially saying, hey, Thanks for booking an appointment. Your appointment is confirmed. Here's the time, et cetera. If it's virtual, here's the Zoom link. Whatever you wanna put into the confirmation email, just edit that and then hit save. Okay, next we have a wait step. So this is going to hold the lead or the contact here until before 24 hours. So that means 24 hours before the appointment time, it will release them and then they're gonna go into this reminder email here hey, you know, your meeting is in 24 hours, whatever you wanna put, obviously fill all that out, hit save. Then we have another wait here that's holding them up until one hour before and then a one hour reminder. Now, you can make this timing whatever you want. You could add more waits, you could um, remove them, you could add SMS messages in here, but this is what's here in the placeholder. So just go ahead and review those and make sure that your appointment reminder notifications are the way that you want them. Okay, then our next wait is set to after. So we're gonna wait one hour after the appointment. And again, you can change that timing to be whatever you'd like. But after the one hour, we're gonna send an internal notification. So this is gonna go to your client who you want to survey about what happened with the appointment. So maybe it's you know the owner or the practitioner, whoever it may be, we're gonna send them an email. And again, this could be a text message as well, but fill out the information here. Um, give it a subject of like appointment follow-up for contact name. So when they get the email, let's say Tom Smith had just had his appointment an hour ago. Uh, let's say the doctor gets this email and it said, how did your appointment, uh, appointment follow-up for Tom Smith? And so in this is where we're going to link our three trigger links. So here we have, how did the appointment with, and again, it's gonna spit in the name, Tom Smith, go. They showed and purchased. So highlight this, click the link icon, and then from the link list, choose showed and paid. Hit save, great, and now we're gonna do the next one. They showed but didn't pay. So highlight it, hit link, and then choose the showed but didn't buy trigger link that we set up. And then lastly, the no show, so highlight that, click link, link list, and choose your no-show link. Then go ahead and hit save. 
and save down here. Okay, the next wait step that we have is going to wait until one of those trigger links is clicked. So we need to set the links here. So where it says select trigger link, go ahead and click that drop down, and then choose the trigger links that we just created. So no show, showed and paid, showed but didn't buy, and then save. You can set a timeout if you want to. Like if you only want to wait a certain period of time, and if he hasn't clicked one of those links, go do something. Um, but in this example, we're going to leave the timeout off and we're going to hit save. All right, next up we have an if else condition. And here we are using the option of events trigger link clicked. And now we need to tell it which one we're looking for. So I have this set up here and the way it'll be with the recipe that you're looking at is that the first option should be the showed and paid. So for the operator choose is and then choose your showed and paid link. And to make it more intuitive, I would change the name here. So did they click showed and paid? Hit save. Okay, so now we're asking, was it the showed and paid trigger link that got clicked? If yes, okay, great, what do we wanna do? Okay, so next we have a wait step that's going to hold them until that purchase amount is filled in. So again, we're asking, so the, the doctor clicked the link that said that they showed and paid, great, on that form that he's looking at or she's looking at, there's a field there that asks them how much did they pay. And so we wanna wait until they fill that out or I have a timeout here of five minutes. So we just need to create our segment here. So what we're gonna do is click select and we can search for purchase amount, that custom field that we created, select that. And our operator, we're gonna go is not empty. So as soon as anything gets entered into that field for this contact, they're gonna continue through this wait step. So go ahead and hit save. The next up, we have an add update opportunity event here. Now, this assumes that you've already created an opportunity in a previous workflow, right? So whenever somebody claimed the offer uh, that led to this booking, you would, I would advise you to have created an opportunity in a pipeline so what we're doing here is we're just updating that opportunity with a new status of one. And so if you wanna move them in a pipeline, let's, let's say you have a, a stage at the end of the pipeline for um, you know, purchase something or whatever it may be, you could do that as well. So you could select, um, well first make sure that we select the pipeline and then you can choose a stage here. This should already be set as one and then you can go ahead and hit save. Lastly, we have our review request. So just come in here, choose the type email or SMS, whatever we set up at the very beginning, whatever you want it to be and hit save. And when they hit this step, it's gonna send the review request out to the customer and we're gonna generate a bunch of positive reviews for our clients automatically. So now let's back it up a little bit here. Um, let's say that the person who received the survey email did not click showed and paid. So what we have next is another if else asking, okay, did they click link two? So here we need to tell it what we want link two to be. So let's say uh, link two was showed but didn't buy. So change your text here. Did they click showed uh, but didn't buy? And then go ahead and change the third if else as well. So this is going to be no show. And we're gonna select our no show here. Now this is up to you to decide what you wanna do when any of these two options happen. So if they click showed but didn't buy, I would probably add them to another automation that's like a long-term nurture or a follow-up related to this specific offer, whatever you want it to be. And then if they no showed, I would have a no show automation um, or you could just build it out here to go down the yes chain there. Okay, once you have this all set up, let's go to the top and hit change this from draft to publish, hit save. And now we can test this out. So I'm gonna hop over to my contacts here and I'm gonna grab one of my contacts. So, okay, so I've got Tom Brady here as contact. So I'm gonna go and add him to a pipeline. So create a dummy contact and then you should be able to come in here and type their name, choose them. Okay, great, I want him in there as a new lead, hit add. Okay, so once you see your new lead there, we can head back to automation and let's go jump back into that automation we created. All right, so to test this out, scroll down to the internal notification step 
and set it to go to yourself. So user type custom email. I'm gonna change this to my email address and oops, that accidentally changed the from name. So I'm just gonna put test that test.com for now and then go ahead and save that. So now we can come up here and hit test workflow. Oops, first let me save. Now we can hit test workflow and I'm gonna type in Tom Brady. If you don't see the contact that you just added, just do a hard refresh and then you'll see them. So I'm gonna to choose Tom. So let's, what we're saying here is, okay, Tom is already in an opportunity. He just booked an appointment. And so we're gonna test this out. So hit run test and then let's hop over to my inbox. All right, so there's the email. So imagine, again, I'm Dr. Bob, right, or whoever, uh, appointment follow-up for Tom Brady. So I open this up. How did the appointment for Tom Brady go? All right, so let's say he uh, showed and purchased. So if I click this, this should redirect me through the trigger link to the showed and purchase page where we have that form and notice how Tom's name and email are already filled in. So all that Dr. Bob has to do is come in here and add the amount that was paid, hit submit info, they get that message that we added. Okay, great. And now let's head over to our pipeline to see what happened. All right, so if we click back to the opportunities pipeline, I can see here that Tom is now has a status of one. Now your pipeline might be set to only be showing you open appointments. So if you don't see Tom or whoever you tested with, make sure you change it to all and it will then show you um, folks who have different statuses. And so Tom here is set as one. Um, I didn't set it to change his stage, but if you did, you should see that it has moved stages. And if I click Tom's name to go to his contact record and I go to additional info, boom, there we go. His purchase amount was $500. So I have that right there in the record. Okay, so we have the purchase amount here in the contact record, but it's actually not yet in the opportunity. So if we go back to the pipeline and we open up Tom, it's not here in his um, value of the opportunity. And that's because I forgot to tell you to do one step. So let's go fix that. Let's head back to the automations tab. Let's scroll down to where we are updating the opportunity. And in the lead value here, click the tag icon, click contact custom fields, and then you should see that purchase amount field there. Go ahead and hit save, save, and then if you go run your test again, you'll see that the amount ends up in the pipeline value as well. Once you've got it all set up and running, you'll be able to go back to your dashboard and your pipeline metrics will be all correct, including purchase amounts for this particular client. So that's how we build automated appointment follow-up surveys in Workflow Builder.